it just me, or is natural selection kind of blind when it comes to evolution? John! Where is he? Huh. Let's see here. Ooh. Messing with my privacy. Huh? Ow! John! Are you okay? Yeah, no, I'm 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 fine. Are you sure you're okay? Yeah, no, I I, I just got back from the eye doctors. Uh, they dilated my pupils. Um, getting here was a little dicey, but I'm starting to see a lot better now. Uh, then why are you talking to a coat rack? I thought you were looking a little taller. I was gonna get your help deciding on what swatches to pick out, but I think this is a really bad time. No, 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 I, I can do it. Give me a try. Okay, well, I started out by liking this one. Yeah, this one. But uh, then I'd figure I'd tune it back a bit. Yeah, what do you think? I like this one. Yeah. Mm, no. Mm. I think we're gonna work on this a little later. Whatever. We better get to studying. What are we studying today? Natural selection. I've already started reading it. There's a great definition in our biology textbook. Natural selection is the process by which organisms with variation most suited to their local environment survive and leave more offspring. So evolutionary theory holds that natural selection is one of the forces that drives evolution? How's that work? Well, evolutionists say a mutation happens in the sex cells of a creature and its offspring exhibits the resulting trait difference, like a new feather color or something. The trait can give it an advantage or a disadvantage. A beneficial mutation would cause it to become a little better at surviving in an environment than the non-mutants. So its descendants, and thus the trait, eventually outnumber the others. Then the scenario repeats with another variation, supposedly driving evolution forward. But rather than this process producing just the varieties we see among animal kinds, they believe this process built those animals from completely different ones, and can eventually lead to one kind of animal turning into another. But this has never been observed. Fish are still fish, and finches are still finches. And here in the biology textbook, they point out that the polar bear had the advantage as a predator in the snow because of its white coat. And it also shows that if you start with yellow and green grasshoppers, two different traits inherited from the parents, the green may outnumber the yellow in a green environment because they are harder for birds to see and catch. So, did the grasshoppers think through how other animals would avoid it if it looked more camouflaged? Did it know how to genetically engineer itself to express those colors? Did a polar bear engineer its own white coat? No, but that's not what evolutionists believe. They think that these changes happen randomly in the DNA, influencing an individual's survivability. Evolution is a blind process, no offense. Intelligent choices supposedly have nothing to do with it. Evolutionists believe natural selection figured out how to design an eye. But how? It would have to build and preserve over who knows how many generations hundreds of complicated interacting eye parts, including proteins that were all useless until the whole package was eventually assembled. How did it know to engineer animals for flight? Or a navigation system so tiny it can fit in the head of a monarch butterfly, which is smaller than a pin? How did it wire a human brain that's far more complicated than our best computers if it is a totally blind process with no goal or purpose in view? You're right. Natural selection is just a process. It doesn't have a brain. It can't think or design. It had no foreknowledge of what it was trying to accomplish. And yet, coupled with mutations, it's been assigned godlike powers to create things way beyond man's understanding. Yes! It's like they've replaced God's power with random mutations and natural selection. As the textbook points out, it favors a creature's overall ability to survive, but the actual changes are happening deep down in the creature on a microscopic level inside the genes. Wait, 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 wait. So you're saying that when certain individuals die, all their genes just go away? Meaning that natural selection has no power in selecting individual genes? Well, it can't see genes, just whole organisms. Kind of like me trying to help you pick out swatches that I can't even see. But it looks like you're doing better now. 
I am. So how about this one? Or maybe not. <clears throat> also, natural selection is supposed to mean survival of the fittest. But what if <clears throat> someone, nobody in particular, you know, had their eyes dilated and was leaving when they knocked over the fish tank in the waiting room? You did it. Anyway, if exactly half of them died because I di they didn't get them in the water, was it survival of the fittest? <laughs> no, it was survival of the luckiest. Yeah, well, <clears throat> here's a picture of two mutant flies and a normal one. Which one do you think is the most likely to survive in a particular environment? None of them, when I hit him with my fly swatter. All right, all right, all right, the normal one would probably survive best, but it depends on the environment, right? Yeah. So evolution that turns a simpler organism into a fruit fly relies on mutants becoming better able to survive as new genetic information is added and then surviving to pass their genes onward. Mutants are usually worse off since most mutations are harmful and natural selection actually cleanses the population by killing the less fit mutants. This might help keep the most effective traits within a population. So the real world works exactly opposite of what evolution requires. Bingo. And while lots of small mutations can give a survival advantage in specific environments, virtually all the real-life examples show a loss of genetic information, not a gain. Evolutionists have tried to propose various genetic explanations, like gene duplication, but they're putting their faith in a process that has never actually been observed. What's gene duplication? It's when a whole gene accidentally gets copied and then it mutates to become another new gene. Nice story. Have scientists ever seen that happen? Nope, never. And most examples of supposed evolution in action involve things like chemical pathways and small changes in proteins, but how do you get a fin to turn into a limb and then a human hand? They tell interesting stories about how it must have just happened, but I can't find any evidence it actually happened. So, a typical mutation removes information, but only a mutation that can add information really explain how philosophers came from fish. And if you think about it, natural selection can't create anything. It can only deselect by killing whole individuals with traits that are already present in a population. Wow, you're right. You can only select something that is already present. How could nature ever add information to some DNA by subtracting some of what is already there? Great question. And speaking of information, here's another question evolutionists have not even come close to answering. How could chemicals from early Earth spontaneously form molecules with information? That's a stretch. So, natural selection can't do anything without mutations, and mutations can't even happen unless DNA forms from some muddy puddle billions of years ago. You got it. There's no known mechanism for creating information like we find in DNA from simple matter. Information always comes from a mind. And God is the mind behind creating the DNA in the first place. Yeah, but the biggest problem I have with natural selection being able to create new kinds of animals is found right here in our biology textbook. Let me see if I can find it. You're starting to see really well. I am. Now, Charles Darwin is credited for discovering natural selection and describing how it led to the evolution of different animals and plants. Right here it tells the story. After reading Malthus, Darwin realized that if more individuals are produced than can survive, members of a population must compete to obtain food, living space, and other limited necessities of life. Darwin described this as the struggle for existence. Malthus? Oh, I remember him from history. He believed much of the world's problems were due to people reproducing faster than our food supply. Right. Evolution claims that a never-ending chain of struggle and death is what created life. But the Bible paints a different picture. Genesis 3 says that death, pain, and suffering came from man's rebellion against God. And Romans 8 is clear that Earth is under a curse because of our sin. But God didn't leave it there. 1 Corinthians 15 says that one day death will be conquered. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So death is a horrible thing. The Bible calls death the punishment for our sins and the last enemy. Because Jesus Christ took that penalty in our place, we beat death. 
by getting to spend an eternity with God. Evolutionary history says death of the unfit over eons changed fish into humans. But biblical history says that death changed already created humans and fish and the whole universe into a place with problems that Jesus will one day solve. Wow, it seems so strange that the things our, our textbook says could have so much to do with what we believe about the past and about reality. Okay, speaking of beliefs, how would you define religion? I know this from class. It's basically defined as a system of beliefs. Right, so would evolution qualify as a religion? Well, okay, the struggle for survival over millions of years of death is what supposedly created the different kinds of life on Earth, including humans. The Bible tells us death is an enemy, not the hero. But Jesus, the creator, promises us life if we choose to follow him. He's overcome death by rising from the grave. So, natural selection has no intelligence and can't even select what's happening on the genetic level. It can only subtract from what is already present in DNA, and it relies on death to create new kinds of life. Wow. You know, I'm really starting to see that natural selection really doesn't have the power that evolution needs, you know, to turn fish into apes and then people. Kind of makes you think, doesn't it?